Hello everyone and welcome back to our next session. Yes, we're going to still learn about sound, but we're going to learn a little bit more in a bit of more detail. Sound travels through different materials. And what do we mean by that? So let's have a look at our learning outcome for today. It is still the same as before. We're going to explore how sounds are made when objects, materials or air vibrate. So let's dig in and learn some more. So let's see quickly what you need to know after today. Now, first of all, can sound move through different materials? Mm, that's going to be interesting. And we have a fun experiment to test that theory. Now, and what state of matter does sound travel the best? That sounds interesting. How will we test it? Let's see. Enjoy the show further on. But let's start with the words we need to know to understand the concepts of today. First of all, we need to go back to words you've learned in Unit 3 already. A solid. What is a solid? Solid is matter that does not change shape easily. Can you think of something that's a solid? Liquid is the next one. Now, liquid is matter that is wet and can change shape. Can you think of something that is a liquid matter? Two more words we need to know is gas. Now, gas, matter that easily changes shape and often has no color or smell. Hmm, can you think of something that made out of gas? A new word that you've never done before is vibrate, to shake very quickly back and forth. So, shake, vibrate, very quickly back and forth. So, let's dig in. Now, as I said before, in Unit 3, you guys learned about three different phases of matter or states. First of all, gas, liquid and solid. Now, very important, we have to look at the particles. For example, in gas, you can see the particles are far away from each other and liquid are closer in, and solid is against each other. Now, remember this because this will be very important to understand how sound travels. But first of all, let's play a game again. What state of matter is this object? Hmm. Did you say a solid? Yes, you correct. It is a solid. The particles of this object are stacked against one another very, very closely. Now, how about those? Hmm. I can't hear you. What, what state of matter? Did you say liquid? Yes, you are correct. It is a liquid. Now, liquid, remember, particles is liquid, further away from each other. And what about this one? What matter is this? What state of matter? Did you say gas? Yes, you are correct. It is gas. And these particles are far away from each other. So, always remember that. Solid, the particles are stacked against each other. Liquid, a little bit further away. And gas is quite far away from each other. That is why gas can fill any container. Liquid can take any shape of the container. And solid, well, doesn't change shape. Very important. Let's go on. Now, in activity 4.2, you need a few things for the experiment. Yes, first of all, you need a clock. Then you also need a balloon filled with water and a wooden door, or you can even use your table if needed. Now, what is the things we need to do? First of all, we have to cover our one ear and hold the clock about five centimeters away. Can you hear the clock ticking? Yes, I can hear it. Now, next thing you need to do is you have to close your ear with the one hand, put the balloon against the other ear, and then you need somebody to help you with this. By holding the clock almost five centimeters away from your ear again. So that means it might be even against the balloon. So do that and find out. Can you hear the ticking of the clock? Lastly, the one that you need to do is hold your ear against the wooden door while the other ear is closed and somebody else holding the clock on the other side of the door about five centimeters again away from your ear even if the door is five centimeters thick then it means you have to hold it against the door so let's do that and see what you hear mm. now if you have to compare 
between just holding the clock away from your ear or between the balloon and your ear or the door and your ear. Which one did you hear the sound the loudest? Let's see. Well, if you said solid, you are 100% correct. But what is science behind this? The reason for that is to have a look at how the particles are stacked. If you have a look in the solid, for example, the particles are stacked against one another. So when one particle starts to vibrate, it already touches the other one and makes the other one vibrate. And that is how sound can travel faster through a solid and will be much more clearer to the ear. If you have a look at how a liquid particles are stacked, some of times they are touching each other, sometimes a little bit away. So when they are a little bit away from each other, they first need to vibrate and move before the vibration can be carried over to the next particle. And lastly, when you have a look at a gas, the particles are quite a bit away from each other. So they need to vibrate and move quite a distance before touching the next particle. And that makes the sound travel slower through a gas and will not be that clear. Just think about it. If I walk away from this laptop now, the further away I move, the softer my voice will get. The reason for that is because it takes quite a time for sound to travel through gas. Now, that is why solid will be the best matter for sound to travel through and gas the least. Well done, guys. Good job. So, quick question. Now, with this experiment, how do we make a fair test out of it? First of all, what does it mean to be a fair test? A fair test is a test which controls all but one variable when attempting to answer a scientific question. So now we have to ask, what is the things that we've done that was similar each time we tested it? First of all, hmm, we used the same clock and we kept it the same distance away. So, if we can answer it, it was a fair test because you kept the clock the same distance away from your ear and we used the same clock. Why is it important to use the same clock? Now, some clocks might be louder than others. So, if you hold it against your ear, close to your ear, you can hear it clearly. But if I use a, set, a different clock, when I'm testing it through a matter liquid, it might be giving me the same result. So, that would not be a fair test then. So, fair test is to do the same things every time except one thing we change. What was the one thing that we changed all the time? The one thing we changed throughout this experiment is the different types of matter. First, we tested air. Air is a gas. Secondly, we tested water. Water is a liquid. And thirdly, we tested with a wooden door. That is a solid. So, that is the one thing we changed. The rest of the things we kept the same. So, that is how we made it a fair test. Well done, guys. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. Now, let's have a look. What have we learned today? Can sound move through different materials? Yes, it can. It can actually move faster or slower in different types of matter. For example, in gas, it will be much slower, but it can still travel because the vibrations of the particles as it been carried over to the next particle. Same with liquids, same with a solid. Now, what state of matter does sound travels the best? Well, we've done that experiment and we've concluded that the best matter will be a solid. It travels the fastest through a solid. Well done, guys. Good job so far. Now, what do you need to do now? What I want you guys to do is go on the Moodle, download Worksheet 4.2, Complete it for us and please submit it through Moodle again to me so I can check if you understand. Now, that is all for today again, guys. Till I see you next time, please be safe. And if there's any questions, remember to visit me on WebEx next week on Thursday between 5 and 7 or between the slotted times during the week. See you guys and enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.